it sounds a little funny and scary at first, but once you, it's one of those things, once you try it, you're like, damn, where has this been all my life? <laughs> it is such a relieving process and the body just thanks you. You feel so light, so full of energy, so clear in the mind. I hope. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Kundalini Yogini. This is Prasida. If you guys have never been to my channel yet, I basically share all about Vedic knowledge, the science of Sanatana Dharma, spirituality, and conscious living. Um, specifically from the lens of yoga and Ayurveda. So I'm going to be making this video answering all of the most commonly asked questions that I constantly get and I'm seeing and also give a tutorial at the end. Just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Med Essential. They are an amazing family-owned company from Australia that makes medical grade health products that you can use at home for holistic health such as enema kits um, and other different supplies that you can use to help cleanse and detox the body. And I just personally love their mission and what they're all about so thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. I'll be sharing about their kits a little later in the video. So let's hit the ground running with one of the most common questions, what is an enema and are they for everybody? An enema in layman's terms is basically a liquid flushing out of the colon to help remove obstructions um, and specifically waste matter produced you know, by our intestines in our digestive process. So enemas have been around for literally thousands of years. They're one of the most ancient cleansing techniques in across many different cultures, um, but specifically part of the 5,000 plus year old science of Ayurveda and yoga from India, the Vedic sciences. And so Enemas are an essential part of my life as a yogi and somebody who's been studying Vedic philosophy and Sanatana Dharma for many years now, um, directly in India and now in the US also. I've been practicing enemas myself um, for about three or four years um, and I have nothing but good things to say, but of course I'll go over throughout this video the benefits and the, the cons and what you need to look out for. But in short, enemas are most definitely for everyone and in general can be extremely beneficial to most people's bodies as long as you don't have any major surgeries, as long as you don't have any specific diseases or conditions in that area of your body. Enemas are an essential part of the Shuddhi Kriyas or yogic cleansing techniques of the body that are found in tons of different yogic scriptures such as the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. And enemas are also an essential part of Ayurveda, the science of life or Indian traditional medicine system that are used as a part of the shot karmas or the, you know, the, the other different actions for cleansing the body. So in the yogic philosophy, enemas are actually called as jalabasti. They're a part of a kriya or different cleansing techniques that we do throughout our life to help prevent disease. And I'm just gonna share with you guys directly what the yogic scripture says, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, in chapter two, verse 26 to 28. Sitting in Utkatasana, navel deep water, insert a tube into the anus and contract the anus. This cleansing with water is called basti karma or jalabasti. Enlargement of the spleen and all diseases arising from excess wind, bile, and mucus are eliminated from the body through the practice of basti. By practicing basti, the appetite increases, the body glows, excess doshas are destroyed, and the datu, senses, and mind are purified. So what it's basically saying is this not only helps prevent physical diseases, but ba uh, balances our biological energies, what we call the doshas, and also helps restore and nourish our body tissues, what we call as the datus in Ayurveda. And yogis used to practice this, I share this in my other video, but yogis used to practice this by squatting in rivers and inserting reeds up, of, up their anus and letting the water flow in that way. So we're very blessed that we can just use, you know, your normal enema cans and different uh, ways we can do it in the modern day. So what are the health benefits of enemas? Where to start with this one? There's so many endless health benefits. Of course, the most obvious being they are a huge relief to constipation. If you have any digestive issues, enemas will be your new best friend. And they also help prevent, of course, cancer specifically of the colon which is very very common especially in male bodies they're very very commonly used for things like weight loss and detox of the body because they help flush out specifically a lot of toxins that get stored within our colon that we do not remove in our natural 
in our natural excretory process, those things are not removed. The buildup stays within our colon for many, many years. And so when we're doing an enema, we're helping all of those years of our life that, that debris has collected and built up in the walls of our colon. It's going to help to flush that out. As the water sits there, it's going to help flush out those different things that don't normally come out. Enemas are used to prevent inflammation in the body, in general to help prevent many different digestive disorders and also just different diseases that accumulate in the digestive system. They help your body have a glow, have clear, clearer skin, and they are really essential in hydrating the body from the inside out. Again, from the traditional Indian medicine point of view, the Ayurvedic side, they're very key in balancing our doshas, those biolog biological energies of vata, pitta, and kapha, which make up our, our whole entire system, both physically, mentally, and consciously. Spiritually, they're a tool that is used and has been used by yogis for thousands of years to purify or clear the mind and the senses. So what are the health concerns of doing an enema, doing Jalabhasti practice? So the, the worst case scenario of an enema, the worst case that you can get is perforating the rectum or tearing or scratching the, the rectum, which is basically the tissue right inside of your anus when you insert the tube. Now, this is, of course, sounds really scary, but not to worry, it's super easy to prevent through the proper technique, insertion, and position of your bodies, which I'm going to go over and demonstrate in the tutorial at the end of this video. But basically, through, with lubrication, lubrication of the tube and the proper body position, you can easily prevent this, and it is really difficult to, to actually have this happen. The, the second biggest concerns would be electrolyte loss and loss of good gut bacteria. Um, you might have heard or seen this mentioned or worried about by a lot of people, and, and there's a reason for it, right? The, the idea is that when you're continuously doing enema, it will actually flush out a lot of the good bacteria your gut has been producing. Um, this is partially true. You may lose a very, very small amount of it, but it's not as a big, big of a concern as it seems. It's actually very, very easy to maintain harmony inside of your body's ecosystem when you're inputting the right fuel, when you're having the right diet and eating a ton of fruits and vegetables and organic produce that's going to create that bacteria continuously in your gut. So it's not something that you need to worry about. And really, to be honest, the benefits of this practice and what they're preventing from manifesting badly in your body, the diseases and disorders that they're preventing, far outweigh the loss of a little bit of good, good gut bacteria. And if you're really concerned about this, you can definitely take a vegan or vegetarian probiotic. So when do we do enemas? When should we perform them? And how often? Enemas, the best time to do them is definitely the morning time. The reason for this is that we've had a break from digestion. Our body has had time to recover throughout the night where we weren't inputting new food and waste materials into it. And so because you're, nothing is digesting in your stomach, in the upper part of your intestines, your colon is then safe and more free to be flushed out with the water. So the best time you can do enemas is in the morning and on an empty stomach. If you do do them later in the day, one tip is to make sure that at least three or four hours has passed since you've eaten your last meal so that your system has time to cool off. And how often should we do enemas? So in the yogic tradition, with the, with the intent of disease present, prevention as the number one priority and manifesting higher states of consciousness in the yogic body, enemas are done as much as one time a day, if not even multiple times a day. I know yogis that do them multiple times a day. I personally do them daily in the morning time, every single day. Um, but if you wanna start out, I would at least recommend in the minimum doing them one time a week. Um, weekly is, is you know kind of common across the board that I've seen from many different um, nutritionists and doctors recommending one time a week as not being a risky thing. So if you even have those lingering medical concerns about the back, gut bacteria and anything like that, at least start with one time a week. Your body will be very happy that you're helping remove that waste and regulate it. Another common concern is, do enemas weaken the colon? Um, so like I shared, I've been practicing enemas daily for almost three years, um, and I have personally never experienced any lack of 
um, use of the colon or basically the colon getting used to enemas. Um, I think it's kind of this logical fallacy that people think because, you know, it sounds like it makes sense. Oh, if you're constantly doing an enema, you're, you're, you're taking that burden off of the body so that it does the body get too used to it and stop, you know, pooping on its own. No, this does not happen. I have never seen this happen in the thousands of people I know that practice enema and it's never happened to me. To be honest, if anything, my digestive system is way more naturally regulatory and I can go to the bathroom even more frequently and easily without any constipation or obstruction. And this kind of feeds into the next question, which I went over a little bit earlier, but do enemas remove good bacteria? Um, it, in some cases, it is possible it removes a small amount of good gut bacteria, but the amount of bad bacteria and toxins that it flushes out far, far, far outweighs the good that it's removing. Again, if you're concerned about this, you can take a high diet of fruits and vegetables, which are going to naturally give you all of those things anyway, um, but if that's still a struggle for you, you can take a probiotic. So how long do enemas usually take? So enemas can take anywhere from 10-15 minutes to a maximum of 45 to 50 to an hour even. Um, although that, I think that's really, really more rare. Um, although you have to keep in mind in the beginning of your practice, this is a super new experience our body is going through. We have to be a little patient and we get adjusted. Um, but I can assure you within you know a matter of weeks of practicing it, you'll see how much quick, quicker you're able to do it every day. Um, and just, just make sure that you're giving yourself enough time in the morning though so that you're not stressed out. Give yourself a bigger window than you think when you're, when you're new and practicing and you'll be cutting time out as you go, as you practice. So should we do coffee enemas? Now, <laughs> this, is a, this is a whole different segment um, that I think I'll eventually have to do a separate video about, but coffee enemas do have their own benefits. Um, they're a little bit more controversial than just a traditional water enema. Um, but they definitely have a lot of different purposes. That being said, when you're doing enemas, especially daily, please take note that they should just be done with water. With clean spring water or alkaline water, some water which is very good for you, not doesn't have chemicals and fluoride in it, and it can be absorbed by your body nicely. Um, coffee enemas have a different purpose. Some people use them for other detox and energy and different things like that, um, but you can look up separate videos for those ones. For water enemas, they're overall the best ones to use for general for general use and purposes. So now that you heard all this fun facts about enemas and their uses, where do you get a kit and how can you start doing it at home? The question really is which kit to use, which kind of kit. You'll see um, a lot of different ones online if you Google, um, but I've always recommended and I did in the last video as well that you use a metal, preferably steel, enema can. The reason for this is, is that it's medical grade, so it's, it helps keep it much cleaner throughout its usage. And two, plastic is not your friend, really, in any case, especially when you're continuously using it. And so I always try to avoid plastic, one, for waste reasons, but two, because of the impact that it has on your body, the negative impact. So a metal can is pretty much the best bet that you can have. I am using this one from MedEssential because it's a medical grade can and it comes with every single accessory that you would want to come with an enema can and it's an awesome size as you get to doing more and more water. The more that you practice the enema, you'll be able to retain larger amounts of water. And so in the beginning, one liter is going to seem kind of hard to retain, but you'll get the more that your body gets used to it, you'll be able to hold more water and flush more out. Personally, I would say to use a can and not a bag. The bags, I find they, one, they're not visible, so you can't see where the water level is. You also can't see what's inside, if it's getting dirty, and it's much harder to clean. So I would definitely recommend an enema can, and I'll link down below the ones you can get if you want the one like I use. If you order this Med Essential one, you'll see it's called their Premium Enema Kit, and this is a great kit for beginners. It's like the best one that I've ever come across because it comes with all the things that you'd want and a ton of different options and different sizes of the tube that you insert and the hose. So I'm going to show you guys what it all comes with. It comes with the tube and the adjuster for the tube, a whole another tube and stopper that's longer, 
you can see there's multiple different tip sizes. So if you one feels too big or small, you can decide which side, size is good for you. It even comes with an enema bulb. So if you ever want to try out an enema that way, some people do them like this and, and like it. Um, again, I prefer, I prefer the can and I would recommend the can, but this also comes with it. And it's really cute. It comes with a little travel bag that you can, you can put it all inside when you bring it with you when you're traveling. And definitely travel is one of the best times to do enemas. Why? Because we all know when we travel and change location, quite often we have constipation issues, right? And so enemas can help to re-regulate us and help us have a smooth transition to wherever that we're going. Another reason why I recommend Medessentials kit is because it's, it's super cute. It actually comes with a little really concise printable guide about enemas that also answers all of the same FAQs I'm going over and gives you little tips on how to use it. It's a really awesome little user-friendly guide that you can have as your little buddy while you're practicing your enemas at home. And last but not least, how to do an enema. So this is the fun, the most fun part and the part, don't worry, this is not going to be rated R or PG-13. I'm not going to show you anything disgusting, but I'm going to walk you guys through how to do this in the bathroom and I'm going to show you guys what's the proper position, how you need to fill the can, how you hold it, all of that fun stuff. So let's get started with that. So you want to have a kit that comes with all the different parts so that you're not totally frozen when you're trying to start your enema and not knowing what to do and how to put it together. So that's why I definitely recommend getting a kit like the Medessential full enema kit that comes with all the different tools that you need. So this is your enema can. Okay, obviously that's going to be where you fill it with pure water and you want to have, again, high quality water. I personally use uh, our home filter and ionizer, which is called a Kongen machine. If you want to know more about that, you can message me directly. So I'm going to fill it with that water, no fluoride, no chemicals in it, just pure ionized water. So this little piece that sticks out is where you're going to attach your tube, your hose that's going to connect to you. So you're going to take out the hose and that's the piece that's going to be this long tube with two ends. One is going to have a clamp. That's going to be what basically stops the water flow. So when you want it to not be squirting out, you're going to lock the clamp and when you want it, you're ready to start the enema and it's already inside, you can let that clip go. But for now, we'll just keep it locked for safety, okay? So this tube already comes with a with the insert part attached, but if I wanted a smaller one or I wanted to change out the tube to a different style, all I would do is take that part off and then insert this one. It's really pretty self-explanatory. You usually just click or twist on. Then on the other side is gonna be just an open-ended tube. I'm going to take that end and I'm going to attach it right on to my bucket. And then it's also going to slide or twist on with a little force. Okay? And so that's super snug. I could do it further, but don't need to do that for the video. And then we're going to fill it now. Make sure, again, that our tube is sealed so no water is getting everywhere. So you're going to be really limited to the amount of water that uh, you're able to get inside of you when you're first new to this. And don't worry, that's completely normal. Your colon's not used to having water inserted into it, and so your body's just going to take a little time to adjust. The one thing I recommend is just to sit with it. You're going to feel a little uncomfortable. It shouldn't be too painful, but it is going to feel like a pressure, and you just got to sit with that feeling and breathe. So we're still going to fill it up as a, at a normal level, which is about a liter of water. So this enema can is a bit bigger, so I'm gonna fill it up about halfway. So once you've filled this bad boy up, you wanna note that you need to release the air bubbles in the tube and the water. So before you ever insert it into your body, you wanna release a little bit of the water out of the hose so that it gets the flow going, right? That there's not gonna be air bubbles that are getting stuck and preventing the flow of water. So before I sit down and insert the tube, I'm just going to release the clamp, let the water come out of the tube, and if you need, you can just lift it up and you'll see, right? It gets the flow going. And then I'll close it again, stop the flow, get into my comfortable position, whether I prefer to squat, to squat on the toilet, or to lay on my left-hand side. 
I'll insert this tube into me and now the water is going to flow nicely with no air bubbles. So there are two main positions recommended to get the water flowing through the colon properly and have no problems inserting the tube and no damage done to the body. That is squatting, which we call Utkatasana. So it's going to be almost like this chair-like position, like you're sitting on an invisible chair and you insert it. This can be a bit tough for beginners, especially since you have to hold it. So sometimes you can literally just move to the toilet and use the toilet for help. But you kind of want to keep that position of your chest angled towards the knees. Knees are high up towards the chest so that you're able to insert perfectly into your rectum without any issue. A secondary option is lying on your left hand side. So you can put a towel down, create a nice space for yourself, or if you have a rug or something in your bathroom, make sure you have a com comfortable space. You're going to lay down on your left hand side. And again, you can actually bring your knees to your chest, almost like you're in a fetal position. That's going to be the most helpful and easiest for you to get the tube in and get the water flowing. So two really helpful pieces of advice I will leave you guys with that is gonna make any enema much more comfortable and easier. One, you wanna make sure that the can stays above your head or higher than you so that naturally the water flows down and into you and not vice versa, <laughs> right? If you put the can lower than you, you can imagine what happens. Your waste is now gonna go into it instead of the clean water going into you. So make sure that the can either, see a lot of them come with a little handle or hook this one even comes with a hanging hook for the for like hooking it onto your shower or a little part of your bathroom. So you can use that to help hang it on the back of a door or wherever you can. Or you can put it, also why I love the cans is you can set them nicely on the counter, right? Right next to the toilet. If you're sitting on the toilet, you can leave it here and it'll nicely flow into you. And the last very important piece to remember is lubrication of the tube. You can use any type of natural coconut oil, I would definitely recommend that. No scents or flavors and anything like that. Just use coconut oil. You can take a little bit and just apply it on the tube all over the tip so that when you insert it, it's very effortless. You're not going to have any pain. It's not going to be hard to insert. Again, I know this can be a, the scariest part of the process and feel really weird in the beginning, but you get used to it so fast. Your body adjusts and you'll feel cleaner and lighter than ever. So once you've finished, you can dump out any excess water. You don't want to let any water be sitting in the enema can. Obviously that will get dirty and moldy. So make sure that it's pretty much dry. Release any remaining water from the hose by lifting the can up, right? You don't want to, again, any water left in the hose. That's going to be the hardest part to clean in the future. So let all the water come out as much as possible. You can clean the tip with just some soap and water, rinsing it under the hot water and using the soap to clean it off. So I usually store it just right under my bathroom sink or in one of my bathroom cabinets so that it's there, ready for me to do every day, right in my arm's reach so I don't have to overthink it. Keep it nicely stored there. And then if you, after some months of use, if you notice that the tube is getting dirty or the can is getting dirty, um, again with the steel ones, you're gonna really not get that as often. But when it comes time to clean, you can just use scalding hot water, a little bit of dish soap or any type of natural soap alternative that you like to use, mix it in the water. You can also use apple cider vinegar and different vinegars to mix in also with distilled water, hot water, let it soak and it'll clean everything else out. The last thing I'll leave you guys with is that enema really practice makes perfect. You're going to get way more comfortable as you go. In the beginning, you might feel a little frustrated. You'll, you'll get to know your body. You'll get to know what angles. If the water is not flowing nicely, all you usually have to do is shift around. You might need to move your knees up a little higher or maybe relax your knees a little more. You might need to squeeze your butt a little tighter or release a little bit. There's going to be these things you're going to learn as you go. Play around with it. Don't get too stressed out about it. In the beginning, you're not going to get a lot of water retention probably. But once you get a little more comfortable, if you can get even half of the can, uh, about 750 milliliters, if you can do that, that's a great amount to have on a daily basis. Just let the water enter your colon, maybe max just a few minutes. You're going to hold it, if not less. And then as, you, as soon as you get to the toilet, you can release. Um, you'll see every day there's going to be buildup, truly. And it's amazing that our body stores that much waste. So 
Enemas are really eye-opening into what's stuck inside your body most of the time, and I think that you guys will really experience the benefits yourself. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my channel and watching this video. I hope that it was helpful for you and that you can start really experiencing the benefits of enemas in your life. It sounds a little funny and scary at first, but once you it's one of those things, once you try it, you're like, damn, where has this been all my life? <laughs> it is such a relieving process and the body just thanks you. You feel so light, so full of energy, so clear in the mind. I hope you enjoy implementing this yogic, this Ayurvedic technique and practice into your life and detoxing your body and system and overall having more balanced energies in your bodies. A huge last thank you to Med Essential for sponsoring this video and I really hope that you guys get the benefit of their products in your life because it really makes this whole process, this learning curve, much simpler with the awesome kits that they have. Let me know if you have any further questions in the comments down below and the experiences and benefits that you've had from doing enemas in your life. Thank you guys again. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content about the yogic lifestyle and Vedic studies and knowledge. And I will see you guys on the next video. Nithinandam, guys. Good to see ya.